The flight of Faith 7 would span 22 orbits, nearly a million miles in 33 hours, the same length of time it had taken Lindbergh to cross the Atlantic. Cooper's ship performed flawlessly almost to the end, when everything started to break down. It was John Hodge's first mission as flight director. It's amazing how many things went wrong. Uh, it's very difficult to, or at least it was in those days, to build uh, a vehicle that could be 100% uh, successful and reliable. Uh, what you tended to do was to build things uh, in duplicate so that you always had a backup situation. And in the case of the, uh, the Mercury program, the, the sort of final backup was the guy himself. Now, the action that I have taken is to turn off my O5G switch fuse and my emergency O5G switch fuse. I was losing, bit by bit, losing my total electronic system. All that would go out. I, I would have left the, the radio hooked direct to the battery. I'd have my wristwatch for timing, and I'd have eyeballs out the window for attitude. Gardo's mission was probably one of the most interesting because they put in all these fancy automatic systems, but by the time that uh, he got down to rectifier, all of his automatic systems had failed. He was the first crewman who flew a totally uh, manual reentry. Did a fine job. The failure of Cooper's spacecraft was eventually traced to the most unlikely of causes. His urine collector had leaked. To put that succinctly, we did not have the spacecraft systems hermetically sealed as we later did. And so moisture could enter into the black boxes or the electronic systems. And uh, a lot of moisture was free in the spacecraft from, from the urine that would leak out of the uh, collector. And a lot of that urine got into the systems and caused them to short out. Project Mercury ended in triumph. With Gordo Cooper's 22 orbits in 33 hours, America demonstrated that it had the expertise to travel in space and was now aiming for the moon. <laughs>